Welcome to my kitchen. The holidays are here, and you want to make something extra special for Christmas dinner. Well, you've come to the right place. I'm going to show you you can make a delectable roast that is both healthy and easy to prepare. It's prime rib roast with classic horseradish sauce. This can be a rich meal, but in moderation, it's both a delicacy and good for you as well. So let's get started. Let's talk about how you pick out your meat. When you pick your roast, a good rule of thumb to follow is figure one rib feeds two people. That makes it pretty easy. Ask your butcher for a lean cut of meat on the small end. It costs a little more, but it's so worth it. It has less fat and is so much more tender. We know that some fat will give a layer of insulation on the top of our roast while roasting, but we don't want too much of it. Also, you don't want to, if you don't want to carve the roast, don't worry about it. You can ask your butcher to cut the bone off and tie it back on the roast when you're in the roasting stage. The bone adds a lot of flavor, though, so leave it on if you can. Carving really isn't that hard. It's definitely easier on a prime rib roast than it is on turkey. Well, I've already preheated my oven to 425 degrees. Now, what I'm going to do is a little bit different. You're going to see a lot of recipes out there making prime rib. And the way I like to do it is called searing for that first 20 minutes. So I'll put it in a little higher heat for 20 minutes to sear in those juices and then lower the temperature to 325 for the rest of the cooking. So I've preheated the oven to 425 and positioned my rack in the lower third of the oven, not the bottom, but just a little below the middle, depending on your oven. Now we're gonna put our roast, as you can see here, in a medium-sized roasting pan. And now we're gonna make a dry rub. This is really, really easy. We're gonna mix together freshly cracked pepper, which I have here. I put it in a bowl so I didn't have to pour it because I knew it'd make me sneeze on camera. So we've got our pepper. Then we're gonna have coarse sea salt. You know, some people even use rock salt. You want it to be really, really coarse. So we'll do that. And then we've got our herbs. We've got thyme, we've got some sage, we've got marjoram and paprika. This is an old family recipe, which is really good, but if you don't want to do all of these different herbs, it works really well with salt and pepper as well. We'll just kind of blend this together, get all those spices nice and mixed, and then we're gonna rub this all over the roast. We're gonna wanna make sure we get all sides of the roast covered too, because that's gonna really, really help the aromaticness when it cooks, it's gonna be so good. So we're gonna take this now, what I want you to also remember, another little secret, is take your roast out about an hour before you roast it, as it really needs to be room temperature before the cooking stage starts. Now we're gonna take some of this and we're just gonna sprinkle on the roast, and you've gotta rub it in really good. Now, sometimes I've seen that some chefs will take and rub the roast with oil first. That's a good idea as well. I just didn't have it with me today, but I like to do that sometimes. So we're gonna get that rubbed in, kind of pat it down so that that salt will kind of adhere to the uh, side of your roast. And then you just kind of rotate it around because you wanna get all the roast covered with these spices. And then it tastes really good while it's cooking. Now, sometimes some people will add vegetables to the roast. I think it just adds flavor to it, so I like to do that. See how that's nice and patted in good? That works really, really well. Now I've got to do this side over here because I didn't get enough over here. So we'll turn it over here. Now, you know how I said that you can take the bones and leave them on for roasting? Well, the reason that I do that, not only for flavor, is because when you have the bones on here, it serves as a rack. You know how when you buy your roasting pan, it comes with a rack? Well, you're not gonna need a rack because these bones serve as it. So if you wanted to have your butcher cut off those chine bones, then what you're gonna wanna do is uh, have them tied back on for flavor. All right, I've done enough rubbing in there. Let's get all that in there really good and get this side a little better. Okay, now I'm gonna put it this way because I wanted to show you that all rubbed in. Now for our vegetables, I've got 
vegetables that I'm just going to put around the roast to just really help it taste good. We've got some carrots. Now these vegetables are going to be cooking for a long time in the oven, so you're not going to want to eat them. They'll be too mushy. But you know what they're really good for? Is to put in the freezer and use them when you make stock. That's really a good tip. And these onions, they're going to roast so nice. We'll just spread these on all sides of our roast. There you go. And some celery. Then we're going to take any remaining of our dry rub and we're just going to sprinkle over our vegetables. And I see a spot up here I want a little bit more. There we go. And that is it. I'm telling you guys, this is so easy. This is just really good. And again, we're going to put that in a 425 oven. But I want to talk to you a little bit about the roasting process. This is what can be confusing to some people, and it's really easy. So to take the confusion out, just remember this. Okay, I'm going to cook this medium. So I'm going to roast it 20 minutes per pound. So it'll be about an hour when I start checking the temperature. This is a good time to show you how to check the temperature, because really, that's the key to making a good roast, is getting it in the oven at a certain temperature and then pulling it out at the right time. The way that I have found that this works the best is to use this neat little instant read thermometer. It's inexpensive, but I tell you, if you cannot leave this in the roast in the oven, it'll ruin it. What you're going to do, I love this one because it has a huge LCD display and since I'm about ready for reading glasses, that's a good idea. You just push the button, turn it on, and you'll insert it about here. And you'll want to go down to the thickest part of the meat, but do not touch a bone. Because the bone conducts heat and you'll get a false reading. So you would take it just about like this and just insert it like that. Leave it for 15 seconds before you read your temperature. And then just simply take it out. When your roast reaches 110 degrees, you're going to want to check it frequently because the temperature rises quickly after that. So since we have preheated our oven to 425, our oven's ready, and we'll just go pop it in there for 20 minutes and sear it really good. Then we'll lower it to 325 for the remainder of the cooking time. Let's go put our roast in the oven. It's smelling so good already. I know the family is just going to love this for Christmas dinner. Man. And this is a good time. You put it in the oven. You're home cooking and doing the rest of your meal anyway, so you don't really have to spend too much time in the kitchen. So what I'm going to do is remove the roast from the oven according to this chart. 120 to 125 degrees if I want it rare. 125 to 130 degrees for medium rare and 135 to 140 degrees for medium. I actually like to take it out between 125 and 130. Once we take it out of the oven and bring it back over to our counter, we're going to cover it with a foil tent and allow the roast to rest for 20 minutes. This step is critical because it allows the juices to retreat back into the roast. Well, while that's roasting, let's make our horseradish sauce. This is so easy and it tastes so good. We're going to take two-thirds cup of sour cream, put into a bowl. This is so easy, guys. You just add a couple of ingredients and you've got it. We've got some prepared mustard. Dijon style works best. And horseradish sauce, prepared. We'll just whisk that up really good. Be sure you keep this in the refrigerator until ready to serve, okay? Because it is a dairy product. But it tastes really, really, really good. You know, roast is something that a lot of people are intimidated by, but I really don't think it's that hard. It actually tastes really good, and you can go about the day with your family not spending the whole time in the kitchen. You've just got to remember that after about an hour, you start checking that temperature. When you do check that temperature, you know, it's kind of works. You don't have to take the roast out of the oven. You just simply open the oven and poke it in that side that's near you or pull it out just a little bit because you don't want to burn the top of your hand. All right, we'll take this and put it over on our serving side. Now, this is really fun, isn't it? Isn't Christmas dinner just absolutely wonderful? Spending time with family and having everyone in, the aromas of everything you're making, it's wonderful. I have a finished roast to show you. This is so beautiful. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous roast that we have prepared for you. Now, this is medium. You can see from the inside that it's just a little pink. It is just beautiful. 
Let's talk about carving. It's really easy. What you'll need is to have a good knife with a long, long, sharp blade like this one and a fork. And the thing that's neat about the fork is you just hold it in and you hold the meat still while you're cutting it. And then you just slice it like you do a slice of bread. It's that easy. You'll just want to cut the bone off the bottom, put it aside, slice it. There you go. These are about a half inch thick, which is really good. And that's what we like to do for a medium roast. And you know, you don't want your portions to be too big. So that's a good idea to have it about like that. This looks perfect. It's a little more done than those. The outside edges are a little more done than the ones in the middle. So your guests can have the piece they prefer. Like we said, this is a rich dinner, but in moderation, it's a delicacy that we can indulge in, especially at the holidays. What a beautiful dinner this makes, and now you can see how easy it really is. You have a beautiful dish for Christmas dinner without spending the whole day in the kitchen. After all, the holidays are about spending time with those you love. I hope you enjoy this one. For a copy of this recipe, as well as roasting tips, log on to my website, Healthy Cooking with Cindy, print it off and enjoy it. Stay tuned. We'll be right back after these messages.